Fire away. Mike, can you talk maybe like how you felt coming in this fight? I mean, you're used to getting booed, I know that, but yesterday it seemed like it finally got to you. Can you, can you talk, tell us maybe what those emotions were about yesterday? Um, no, I think it was mainly the uh, being point two of a pound of it. That's what really frustrated me. Um, I've been, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm used to being booed. And, you know, I, as I've said many, many times, maybe at the start of my career, it bothered me a little bit, but now, you know, what can I do? I, I can't change it, I'll just always be myself. Um, and I've said it a million times, but as long as the people closest to me are happy with me, I'm, I'm at peace with myself. My coach, my coaches, my family, my friends are, you know, there's not much else I can do. Uh, but when I got on the scale and I was not putting two pounds over, I was really mad. A, because it let Jason have one up on me, you know. B, because I knew there was a nice cold drink in the bag next to me, waiting for me to drink. And C, it's a little unprofessional. And I take what I do very, very seriously. Um, and it was <coughs> point two, it was nothing. You know, so I ran to the treadmill and I was back within 10 minutes and had it done. But yeah, I, I was pissed off at that really, more than anything. Did that factor into, you know, obviously the cardio was a little bit of an issue tonight. Um, was it that weight cut or, or what was it? What, what happened tonight? I don't think the cardio was an issue. You know, I think Jason's cardio, well, I don't think Jason, anyone's cardio was the issue. Did you see the pace of the fight? You know, you see how many punches I was throwing? You know, the, 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 my cardio was not an issue, um, far from it. And Jason's known for his cardio as well. I feel it was a fast pace and, uh, you know, whilst I was tired, I was able to keep the pace up and Jason's only ever been stopped once before and, uh, you know, it was a shaky first round. I, you know, I thought I, I was annoyed at the first round. Maybe I was uh, a little blase or whatever, but uh, I got in my rhythm eventually and took care of business. Dana called it maybe the most one-sided one fight he's seen in the UFC. Did it feel like that to you? Who said that? Dan said? Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. No, I know you. Uh, certainly did feel like that when I was on my back with him almost mounting. Um, but yeah, I knew physically, as soon as we clinched up or anything, you know, I, I, I knew I, I was more physically dominant than this guy. Uh, I knew he, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, but he was just so awkward and so unorthodox, you know what I mean? But um, at the end of the first round, I, I was like, bloody hell, you know, that didn't go to plan. What the hell? All right, come on, let's do it. And that's why I said, um, you know, uh, Joe Rogan said about Anderson, I was like, well, you know, I've got a few things to sort out, you know, if I'm going to have first rounds like that. But yeah, rounds two and three, very one-sided. When, when, oh, when did you think that, you know, he, he obviously he was getting tired, when did you think, okay, I've got him now? Uh, towards the end of the first round, I mean, I, I, I kind of, kind of started being able to predict his rhythm, you know, and in the second round, um, you know, it all started to come together, I started landing my shots and I started really dictating the pace and using my footwork to cut him off, you know, and, and keeping his back against the cage, that was the plan, keep him, you know, if I've got him backed up against the cage, I've got all the cage behind me to move away and sprawl if he shoots or whatever, so that was the plan, I worked hard with Tiki and Mark Kidding, my boxing coach and things like that, so, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I, I knew I had control in the second round, for sure. Yeah. Mike, were you surprised at, at all, though? I, I mean, I know I understand what you're saying about the pace of the fight, but, uh, you know, just everyone talking amongst ourselves and on Twitter is saying that Jason really gassed very quickly, and he even said it himself, you know. That yeah, no, it's nonsense. It, uh, well, this is it. Every one of my opponents gasses. Anytime I stop someone, it's because they gas. <laughs> guarantee Jason didn't gas. I guarantee Jason could have gone five rounds. <coughs> this was a five-round fight. I finished it in the third, yeah? This is a big opportunity for Jason. I guarantee he had the cardio to go five. Guess what? You might have cardio, but when someone's landing big body shots like I was, kneeing you in the stomach and punching you repeatedly in the face, your cardio gets affected. Mike, can you talk about the headbutt? Because I bet the, the best runners in the world, you kick the shit out of them, they won't run right around. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You get a lift for Christian here, kick the fuck out of him, see how quick he does 100 metres. <laughs> but yeah, he, he clashed real good with my head there. And, I was fine, but I just, I could feel it instantly. I felt a big lump come on my head. It probably felt bigger than what it actually is. And I was just concerned that if it started bleeding, it would bleed into my eye. So I don't know what I wanted the ref to do, but I was like, whoa, 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 he's just headbutting me. You know, I'm not sure what I wanted him to do about it. You know, you can't rewind it and take it back, but uh, yeah. Is this Good. one of the most rewarding victories you've ever had? Yeah, I would say so, you know, because, um, you know, I mean, as I said on the microphone, I think me and Jason did a great job on the Ultimate Fighter. You know, it was entertaining. Uh, I, I, we did a great season. We had great fighting talent on the show. I'm, I'm very proud of the show that was put out. You know, we're here to entertain. Um, you know, there's good guys and bad guys, and people try to paint me as the bad guy. I really don't see what I do to deserve that, but who cares? But uh, 
this was a satisfying victory. You know, Jason has been, Jason jumped on the bandwagon of that nobody likes me, B, that I'm not a very good fighter, and that I don't deserve all the, um, basically all the rewards that I've received for being a professional fighter for all this time. He's been quick to uh, discredit me and saying that I was, I was given handpicked opponents and things like that, you know, and, and, and that doesn't sit well with me, you know, and I find that very offensive. So it was nice to go out there and teach him a lesson. People don't like you, but a lot of them. Nah. You're fucking nice guy. I think you're nice guy. Thank you. Hey, I got Diego's approval, so. Plus, I got more booze than you. Did you hear more booze than me? Holy shit, you're doing something right. You're a nice guy, bro. I live with you for six feet. I think people just need to meet you and talk to you, hang out with you for people can't stand. You know, sometimes people don't understand. There you go, you got it. But as I said on the mic, I don't give a shit about whether you boo or cheer, you know. I mean, I'm here. This sounds like a, a cheesy corny line, you know, but I just do it for my family, I really do. I got into this sport, when I got into this sport, I, I just wanted to be able to make enough money. Because I, I did dead end job after dead end job. I just wanted to make enough money to be able to go to college and learn a trade and to be able to get a job, you know what I mean? And I far exceeded that, um, that, that, that goal, you know. So right now, everything is a bonus, so I'm happy. Some of the stuff he, he said about your fighting style specifically, that you're a points fighter and you had no really danger to finish him, did, did that make you even extra motivated to, to get a finish in this fight? Um, well, yes, I suppose, I suppose it did. You know, I mean, I, I went about 13, 14 fights finishing all, all my opponents in the first round, you know, and I've always been an aggressive fighter. There's been a couple of fights where I used a game plan, like the Chris Levin one, because, you know, he, he's got a, he, you know, guys like a cyborg. And, uh, and then I fought a few wrestlers. So I kind of got used to fighting on my back foot a little bit. And I had to consciously, you know, break that habit, you know, and go back to, the, you know, the old Michael Bispin, if you will, which sounds, you know, sounds pathetic to sit here and say that. Um, no, I'm using your own name in third person, it's pathetic. But um, I'm not Tito Ortiz. But, um, um, but you know, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. Red Bull's not to my head. Uh, it's energy. Were you surprised how much he was able to take from you? No, he's a, he's a tough durable guy. He's a tough durable guy, and, and I knew that in his fights, you know, he's, he takes a beating well, and I said that leading up to it, but I knew he couldn't continue to take that pace. I even backed up a couple of times, and he didn't want to get to his feet, you know. I'd, I'd beaten it out of him, you know, and, um, you know, for somebody that has no punching power, I do believe the um, statistic is that seven out of eight of my last opponents have all gone to the hospital. While I'm sat here doing this, he's probably in the back of an ambulance. Do you think, now that you've been in there with him, I mean, you kind of talked about him fighting on the regional scene and fighting washed up guys, but now that you've been in there with him, do you think he's a UFC caliber fighter? Yeah, listen, you know, the guy's tough and he's got skills. I think he needs to go, he needs to neaten himself up, though. You know, I, I, the, uh, he's very sloppy on the feet. You know, he needs to do some work, um, I, I would say. I'm sure there's a lot of guys, that he, he took, I've got good takedown defense and he took me down in the first round and maybe someone less experienced, he could have, he could have got the submission, you know, so I can't say that, you know. And then he gave me a tough first round. Excuse me, he really did. So, you know, yeah, he, he could definitely beat guys. He's got a good record, you know, but if I was him, my advice would be to go and just try and um, keep his shape a little bit more when he's standing up, you know, try and be a little more orthodox and a little more neat and tidy. You know, it was announced earlier tonight that, that Chael and Mark Munoz will be fighting in January, uh, number one contender fight for Anderson. <coughs> so with that knowledge, are there any names or goals that make sense for you at this time? Um, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I class myself as one of the best in the world. I, you know, I, the belt. I've been around the UFC a long time, and uh, that's what I want to do. You know, I mean, that's what all fighters want to do. Um, looks like Chael and Mark Munoz. You know, they're, they're going to fight for the number one contender. Fair enough. In the meantime, I want to fight whoever it is that gets me closer to that belt. You know, so whoever it is, whoever the top guys are out there, I want to fight them. You say uh, that you know the, it doesn't matter to you whether people boo or cheer, but people kind of came around to you there at the end. You, you went out and you took a, a bow and you, you got some cheers. I mean, that had to feel better than, than getting booed all the time, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, but uh, it's quite funny. You know, I mean, not to call the fans hypocrites, but they were hypocrites. <laughs> they uh, like yesterday at, at, at the Waynes, they uh, they booed the hell out of me, and it was Joe Rogan's fault, by the way. I blame Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan said, "Come on." 
Let's give some love to Matt. And I was like, I don't want their love. Shut up, Jaws. Don't patronise me. You know, I'm just stick your love up your ass. Uh, but then when I walked out, they all wanted pictures and stuff. You know, so it's kind of a catch. You well, know, you know, a love hate relationship. But yeah, at, at the end, I think some of them came around. As I said, you know, me and Jason, we we're here to entertain the fighters. Everyone's paying tickets. Uh, sorry, money for tickets. You know, they want to see a show. And we gave them a good fight, and we gave a good season of the Ultimate Fighter.